Moving Mountains and the Whiskey War. This is What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. Okay, so uh, today's episode is going to be a little uh, different from our our usual format. Um, our usual for two episodes. Yeah, well, our usual for you know we we we've really got a solid formula now. Two episodes in, <laughs> um, it, it's going to be a little different from our past episodes, I guess I should say. We don't really have a formula yet, um, but. The, the whole idea of this episode is we're going to be looking into some interesting stories about border disputes uh, or, or just borders in general. Just little, uh, little anecdotes uh, from history about how borders uh, can be sort of funny, you know, how, the, how they can be changed or how they can intersect other places. Or and when we like say that. we're going to explore it, it's more of just one person's going to be the teacher. Because I don't know anything about some of the things that Tyler is going to say. And I guess Tyler doesn't know anything about what I'm going to say. Yeah. So it's, it's more of one person gives information and the, and the other the other person starts to comment on it. For fact checking, I'm, I'm going to have a few art- articles in front of me here just to, try to, just to try to keep the facts pumping and make sure that this is accurate. So, uh, so well, we'll we see how this goes. I think a good place to start is the tale of Hans Island. Now, it's uh it's a pretty small. Uh it's it's basically an uninhabited barren knoll. It's 1.3 kilometers squared, 1200 meters long, 1100 meters wide. So it, is this in the Pacific Ocean, Atlantic? Uh it's directly between it's directly between Denmark and Canada. Now, for those of you who don't know (laughs) your world geography uh, that well, if you look at a map, you'll see Canada has this archipelago of islands extending up sort of into the Arctic Circle. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people may not realize, but that archipelago and Greenland are basically right next to each other as far as geography goes. (laughs) Yeah, Greenland's kind of like a big island of the archipelago. Mm Mm-hmm. How international treaties uh, with waterworks is basically, I think it's 200 miles off your shore, something like that. That sounds about right. Yeah. Think, yeah, you get sovereignty of everything within 200 miles of your shore. And so this story has to do with how close they are together, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Basically, Hans Island is, you know, small, uninhabited, barren knoll. There's barely anything on it. It's it's the smallest of three islands uh, located in the Kennedy Channel. It, it's within the territorial waters of both Canada and Denmark. There's sort of a, a, a long history for this sort of oft, like, just a completely abandoned island. Nobody lives on it. So is this kind of like Svalbard type of thing, just like an offshoot of a country? Is I mean, is there any reason why Denmark owns this island? Well, I'm going to go into the history of that. So, basically, uh, the Inuit would have probably uh, known this island, you know, something like that. And it's not known whether in, like, you know, uh, the mid-19th century, uh, we don't know if Europeans uh, landed on it. They probably did. Something like that. Eventually, this island was explored, and it, it, they didn't find anything interesting there. It was, it was just sort of ignored. And uh, so, so far, you've been just saying how it's an island. So what's so interesting about it? Well, I'm getting to that. <laughs> okay. In 1920, the Danish celebration expedition of 1920 and 1923, it accurately ma- it accurately mapped the whole region of uh, of the northern Greenland coast. In 1933, the Permanent Court of International Justice. It said that the legal status of Greenland in favor of Denmark, all that, blah, blah, blah. But the United, well, not the United Nations, the League of Nations, uh, way back in the 30s, decided this little island belonged to Denmark. Denmark. Yeah. This little island belonged to Denmark. And it was just sort of open and shut. But then the League of Nations fell apart. So is this kind of just like a decision by bureaucracy? You know, someone's just like sitting... 
stamping papers and one of the papers was like a request from Denmark to get this island and they just decided to stamp it because he was low on time. So, yeah, pre- like, no pretty reason much. at all. I- exactly. The, the, both Canada and Denmark have a claim to lay with this island, but it, it ended up just sort of going to Denmark. But then the League of Nations collapsed, and so now that decision doesn't hold any water. So Did the UN do anything? Uh, no, the UN has not made an official declaration on who owns the island. So now the island was in an odd state of being owned by both Canada and Denmark. And this, uh, this all goes back to that 200 uh, miles within your shore is yours idea. It's within 200 miles of both of their shores. They both ha- can lay claim to this island. And now, now essentially, basically, one day, uh, Denmark went over, planted a flag, and left, uh, some whiskey there. They left some, some Denmark, uh, some Denmark brewed whiskey, and they planted their flag in the island. So is this, what, why did they do it? Is um, this an official expedition? Why'd they leave the flag there and especially like whiskey? No. They, they just sort of put the flag there. I think it was just. They're just um, making a stand against those Canadians. <laughs> yeah. Those they, Canadians can't own the island. Yeah, only it's, Denmark. This is Denmark's uninhabitable tiny island in the middle of the strait. So was is this more like a playful dispute between these two nations? Well, that's what it that's what it turned out to be. After that, uh they they'd been working at the time this happened, they'd been working on signing a cooperation agreement uh in relation to the Nares Strait, which is where this is. Basically, Canada went over, took down the Danish flag, put up their flag, and put some whiskey down, and then they took the whiskey the Danish left. <laughs> and then now, every once in a while... <laughs> uh, is, it, is it back and forth? Yeah, they it's a back going. and forth. They'll, they'll take out the other country's flag, put their flag in, and leave some whiskey for the next person who comes by to take it, and then they'll put their flag down, put down the whiskey, and leave. And it's, it's just... Very interesting, because usually you'll hear about border disputes like the the South China Sea or something like that. All this, all this sort of uh, you know really tense border dispute. But then I just think it's funny to look at the <laughs> Canadian Denmark, the Canadian Danish, I guess, border dispute where they they just leave a flag and leave some whiskey. For so how long person. have they been doing this? Um, I think it's been twenty five, thirty years now. Is it is it like every season they bring a new ship to go knock down the flag? I I honestly don't know <laughs> how I don't know how fast that it happens. Although I, I feel think... like it could be anyone that goes over there and puts up the flag. Yeah, you know, like you could be a tourist. Yeah, you know, it, 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 the the big tourist attraction putting up the Danish flag on yeah, the yeah. on the barren island for your nation. There's. <laughs> There's actually a uh, there. There's a few a few uh, funny articles that have come up about this. There's a website called uh, Free Hans Island, which is basically tries to present itself as bipartisan, but the whole joke is it's like, you know, oh, Canadian oppression of Hans <laughs> Island must be stopped. You I know, like that. there there's a joke on it. Uh, it's been completely uninhabited since the Canadians have owned it. You know, even though it's 100% uninhabitable. That's pretty good. It makes me think, I, w- I wish the U.S. had something like this, you know, with Mexico or something. That's that's what that's what people I were talking to, uh, w- w- that's what they were saying, too. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's just funny to picture, like, if we had that relationship with Mexico. Like, if we had an island that was disputed between us, and we just planted a flag and left whiskey for the next guy. Although I've sometimes imagined that the U.S. has this dispute with you know, the Soviet Union, now it's Russia. If they had gone to the moon, they could have done the same thing. You know, once you're on the moon, you just kick down the flag. What are they going to do? Are they going to bring someone back up to put the flag up? <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I guess that would be more of a more type of the same thing, but on the moon. <laughs> yeah, no, you'd leave some whiskey on the moon, too. And then, <laughs> then you can have some nice moon whiskey. Well, why'd they choose whiskey, do you know? No, I, d- I think... I think the first guy just left some whiskey there, and then it just became sort of a, uh, a an in joke, sort of a tradition. And then it became the whiskey wars. Then it became the whiskey wars. 
That's, you know, tough to imagine why they'd call it the Whiskey Wars. I <laughs> mean, they're just leaving whiskey for each other. Our next topic of discussion, I just want to talk about a place called Agalo, New York. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about this. This is one I'm going blend into. Well, it's, it's probably not a city you've heard of or have been to, but it is a real place. And the interesting thing about this city is that it didn't used to be a city, except it was a city on paper before it used to be a city. Oh, okay. I think I think I know where you're going with this. I think I know what you're what you're going to be getting at. So these uh these cities are called paper towns, I think. Yeah, or maybe that's, paper cities. That's actually what the uh John Green novel was based off of for all you John Green fans out there. Well, actually this this city I think is featured in his book. I think that's what Yeah. Uh, Neither of us have read it, but I haven't I haven't read it. I'm just reading that it is featured in the book that he wrote. Great author. Anyway, Aglo they named it after the initials of the founder of General Drafting. What? Which, Who is the founder of General Drafting? What is he was uh, he was Otto G. Lindbergh, and he had an assistant, Ernest Alpers, and so they combined the initials of both his assistant and the founder to create Aglo. Huh. And okay, so before before I talk about what the city is, I need to explain something about copyright traps. Because when maps are drafting, or when maps are drafted, they they need to uh, make sure that their intellectual property is not copied. Right, because, I mean, a map is just a representation of the real world. It's pretty hard to argue, that person copied my map if there's nothing unique about either of your maps, you know? You need to have some ground to stand on. Right. It's a little easier with a dictionary, because if someone copies your dictionary, you could say... Well, he used the exact same wording that I did in the definitions. Yeah. And that's a little harder to argue because definitions can be said in so many different ways. You know, like dictionaries describe the real world, but it's a different way that maps describe the real world. So yeah. one technique that map makers use to do make sure that their maps aren't copied is they use copyright traps. These are made up cities on the map that are just small places that they don't expect anyone to actually go to. But it's just that if someone scans the map then uh, and copies it and says it's their own map, then the original person who drafted the map could simply say, well, the city of Aglo doesn't actually exist. So yeah, I, I've I've heard of I've heard of paper towns before. I know about these these copyright traps, but I haven't heard of Aglo, New York. Oh, and uh, I think to give a better understanding, uh, some people might be thinking like, what maps? Copyright traps? Like. Sure, it would suck if someone copied your map, but like, what's the worst that could happen? But uh, when these copyright traps were popular, cartography wasn't exactly the easiest thing to do, you know? You had to take precise measurements of the land, I mean... It still isn't an easy yeah, thing to do. Even even with satellite imagery. Like, they did, they couldn't look from a bird's eye view very easily. They had to take accurate measurements from the ground, and, and uh, cartography was very tough work from what I understand. Oh, it absolutely was tough work. And this was the 1930s when this map was created. So this, the company of General Drafting created a map that was of the New York, of New York, and they put Aglo on it as a copyright trap. And then, you know, 20 years goes by, and someone near the city of Aglo decide. well, at this point it's still just the yeah. town, someone near the point where Aglo should be, decides to set up a general store. Oh, that's and they smart. Call it, they that's call smart. it the Aglo General Store. And then later, another cartographer who creates another map puts Aglo on their map because there's the Aglo General Store, so this must be Aglo, right? Yeah. So then General Drafting sues them and says, you copied our map. See, we you fell for the trap, right? Right. And so then the company that didn't actually copy it. The cartographer points to the Aglo General Store. <laughs> and he says, this actually exists. So I didn't copy it. I went out there and found the Aglo General Store. Well, so, and that's... So, so their paper town became like a real town just because it was like so close to the... Just because like the guy figured he could make a profit off of it. Right. Cause... So then that's when, it, that's when it became popular. At least popular in the area because, uh -huh. you know, this town was created... Out of nothing. You know, maps yeah. usually describe what's out there, but instead, this one created something. It actually created a town 
by writing it onto a piece of paper. And it created a town with a name like Aglo, New York. I like the name personally. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it sounds it sounds kind of like something you'd see in like a like a sci-fi movie where they're where they're saying, you know, like, "Oh, it's the new New York. It's uh, New York was destroyed and now we have Aglo, New York or something like that." Well, event- eventually the store went out of business, but the the town was so popular as as kind of like a a cartographer Easter egg that they still keep it on most maps, like Google Maps and the United States Geographical Survey. And so, huh. it's you know it's just uh it's just some little known fact about maps. If you ever want to look at a map of New York and you know where Aglo is on it, you might want to uh you might want to see if you can if you can find it. Yeah, just uh, try to find Aglo. It looks like the cities right next to it are Rockland and Roscoe. If you live in those cities, you might want to check. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that was actually really cool. And in case you just tuned in, this is What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. Okay, so this uh, next topic I'm going to be talking about is an interesting gift for a hundredth anniversary. So... Remember when I was talking about moving mountains earlier in the intro? Well, this is what that was alluding to. Hopefully it's not actually moving mountains. No, we're not we're not we're not doing feats of godlike strength over here. <laughs> we're not we're not moving actual mountains. But there is a symbolic gesture to move borders around a mountain <laughs> that's in the works. Norway is thinking and this isn't confirmed yet but there's been many reports this has been sort of the rage of uh the you know uh higher higher born news cycle you know the more yay humanity rocks news cycle this is this has been the good news for the for the week you know uh, not the not the tired old terrorism crime every day yeah, who you know, more uplifting news. Yeah, this is this is the story of how Norway is considering giving a mountain to Finland as the 100th anniversary of its independence from Russia. So Finland has some has some interesting topography of its own, you know. It's got 188,000 lakes. So, I mean, what, what could you, what could you possibly give that country? And Norway is thinking, give it its highest peak. So, Norway. Oh, its highest peak. Its highest peak. Not, oh, wow. Yeah, we're not just talking. That's a real present there. That's giving up something. Yeah, it, well, it's not Norway's highest peak, but if they gave it up, it would be, uh, Finland's highest peak. Hmm. And it, it's right at the border of, uh, Norway and Finland. So what they're thinking they're gonna do, is they'll move their uh they'll they'll move the border just around the peak so that uh Finland can say, Hey, it's my mountain, it's my peak, that's the highest elevation you can uh, get to in Norway. Well I mean they're just Finland. moving it around the peak though, they're not even giving the whole mountain. Okay, well they're giving them a mountain peak. <laughs> um You'd be thinking like, oh, you know, th- th- this is yeah, what a what a beautiful gift, and well, it's really really cool. They're giving them their highest peak. Uh, nobody else can see this, but the highest peak does sort of look like that. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's basically. It's a little strange. Like a really high up bump <laughs> that that just has like a marker saying like this is the highest spot. It's like the highest peak in Florida. You know, (laughs) you know, have you seen that? It's just a picture of a hill, you know, and it's just, it's the highest peak in Florida. (laughs) Okay. But I mean, this is at like a high elevation. It's at, let me see. Uh, Let me see if I can find it. It's 1300 meters above sea level. 1300 meters or feet? Meters. Oh, sorry. I was thinking 13,000 because then I was, that would be. But never mind. Thirteen hundred meters is okay. Yeah, and well, to be frank, their other peak was also thirteen hundred meters above sea level. But uh, th- their old peak, their old highest peak, was thirteen hundred twenty-four meters above sea level. This new one, Halti's Summit, 
is uh, 1,365 meters high. It's like a nice 40-meter upgrade. Yeah, and interestingly, they're actually moving the border 40 meters, or thinking about it, so that they can uh, put that that uh, mountainside on uh, the Finnish side of the border. And I just think that's a really cool uh, story, you know, just, just a cool thing that might happen. We might actually see a country change its borders to, to a, celebrate independence. Yeah, yeah, I really like that. I mean, it's, it's sort of, I mean, I think it's even, it's a, a better gift, in my opinion, than even like the Statue of Liberty, you know? <laughs> like when, when the French gave the Statue of Liberty, that was cool and all, but... They I mean, didn't give us a mountain. I mean, know? a better gift though. It's 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 more like more uplifting. Yeah, I guess the statue yeah, because of because you liberty. can show off the Statue of Liberty. I mean, you can't really show off a peak that hasn't moved. That's true, but you can, you know, go around shouting about it. I also just love Nordic countries. Just seem to be really nice to each other. Yeah, they just yeah. seem to be buddies, you know, and they all just get along. I why can't all countries be like that? That would just be such a cool world, but alas, it is not the way of things. Uh, but you know, I could just imagine they have a whiskey war on this. <laughs> <laughs> After they move the borders, they say it was a mistake. Yeah, how... so they put their flag, <laughs> make a stand. Yeah, how awkward would it be if if Finland regifted it? <laughs> if they like gave it to a different neighboring country, and they're like, uh, "Sorry," and Norway's just like looking across at them, like giving them like the what? Or you know, like that awkward thing where you get a birthday present and you don't want it, <laughs> so you're like, uh, "Thank you," you know, but you really just want to throw it away. I mean, considering the looks of the peak, it's not exactly a looker. It's basically like a rocky field or a snowy field, depending on how snowy it is. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it's, you know, and there's no getting rid of it. I think, yeah, that's more of Norway's just, uh, we don't really want this anymore, so we're going to pretend it's a present. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, we're closing up on the, uh, on the end of the program. So that's just sort of in general the just interesting stories about borders and geography. I, I think. I, I I might want to do this again, you know. Just I think this format is nice. Yeah, I mean it. it it's really cool. We've got to put a bunch of stories in, you know. You know, next week we're hoping to do a different format where we get a scientist in and interview them. We want to do a segment about the drought. Yeah. So uh, I mean, don't mark your calendars for it, you know. But certainly, you know, give your calendars a good strong look, you know. Because uh, we might end up doing it if we can contact them. So, but we might not, and we might end up just doing this format again, which is completely fine. Yeah, I actually, I like this format. This might end up being the more common format. I don't know. I'll have to see, I'll have to see how the reception is. But anyway... This has uh, been What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew on KOWL 1490 The Owl, Tahoe's Talk. Thank you for tuning in. Mm-hmm.